And your shirt's that silent no more. Perfect. Good morning. It's so great to see so many young people here today. It just warms my heart. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today to speak to so many dedicated pro-life warriors. 3,000 crosses will stand at the end of this walk, which provides a visual reminder of the devastation of abortion. Something else demonstrates it as well. We've all been to vigils where victims are honored and remembered by a moment of silence. If we took a minute of silence for each baby aborted, we would be silent for 112 years. Alice L. once said, you're not a victim for sharing your story. You're a survivor setting the world on fire with your truth. And you never know who needs your light, your warmth, and raging courage. As regional coordinator of the Silent No More Awareness Campaign, I'm here to share the truth of what abortion does and be a beacon of hope for the women and men devastated by the life perpetuated by the pro-abort community. Each time I see a woman entering an abortion facility, my heart breaks because I walked through those doors twice. I was scared. I was confused. I felt I had no other options. I fell for their rhetoric that it was my body, my choice, and that they told me I was doing the right thing. Nobody told me the truth. Nobody told me there would be a lack of compassion as I laid on that table. No one held my hand, offered any comfort at all. No big deal. I may as well have been going in to have a splinter removed. The only smile I got was when I handed over my money. Nobody told me I would eventually realize what I had destroyed was not tissue or a clump of cells but my children. Nobody told me that guilt and shame would follow me for decades. Nobody told me abortion could lead to alcoholism and drug abuse. Praise God, I've been sober for 20 years, but for over 25 years, I was a raging alcoholic. Why? Because I had to do something to forget what I had done to numb the pain. Nobody told me abortion leads to unsavory behavior such as promiscuity. I'm embarrassed to say I reached out everywhere else for love because I could no longer love myself. And when I tried to settle down, nobody told me I would sabotage those relationships. I had two failed marriages because I couldn't allow myself to be happy. Nobody told me abortion leads to depression. The same alcohol I used to forget the abortion and numb the pain contributed to my hurting everyone I loved, leaving me in a self-imposed isolation, shrouded in darkness. I became suicidal and ended up in a psychiatric hospital. When asked why I wanted to die, I told the admitting psychiatrist I was already dead inside. I just wanted to finish the job. Nobody told me abortions result in other life-altering decisions. I lost the chance of experiencing the miracle of carrying and bearing a child. I convinced a doctor to give me a tubal ligation at the age of 30 because I didn't deserve to be a mother. And nobody told me that even though I asked God back into my life, I would still feel unworthy. In 2006, while waiting to step into the waters of baptism, I grew anxious and frightened. Still carrying my secret, I believed the sin of abortion could not be washed away. It might sound stupid, but I feared the water would boil, killing my beloved priest and me. Of course, that didn't happen. But while others rejoiced in their baptism, I was sad. I didn't feel cleansed. For those in the audience who have had or who have encouraged an abortion, I understand the fear, the feeling of helplessness, 
the feeling of having no other choice, and the anger held on to you for being misled by the pro-abort community. You are not alone, and all is not lost. Nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, is unforgivable in God's eyes. There is hope, and there is healing. Your life can be restored and made whole. Abortion creates a gaping wound in our souls, but it can be sealed by asking for and accepting the love and forgiveness of God, our children, and yes, even ourselves. If you are still suffering in silence, or know someone who is, healing programs are available. And there is information on the table over where birth choice is. Or you can visit the Silent No More or Rachel Hope websites in the privacy of your own home. Another thing I would like to address today, one in four women have had at least one abortion. Folks, these are our neighbors, our co-workers, our fellow parishioners, and many have been moved to get involved in pro-life activities while still holding on to their secrets. At several pro-life functions, I have overheard statements such as, I don't know how anyone could purposely kill their own baby, or how selfish and heartless can a woman be to kill her child. I know those statements come from the passion for saving lives and not intended to cause pain, but for one in four they do. When speaking out, remember the fear, confusion, and lies that led them to walk through those clinic doors. Let us all be loving and compassionate voices, not just to those who are seeking abortions, but to those traumatized by them as well. We need to remain vigilant in protecting not only the lives of our unborn, but the hearts and souls of those targeted by the abortion industry or encouraged by other sources, like the one in your backyard. It's imperative. The Church of Scientology knows we are aware of their history of forced abortions and that we are watching and we are listening. According to several former members who have spoken out, the atrocities have been exposed and hopefully stopped. However, we need to keep the pressure on to make sure the practice does not continue in the future. No one should ever be forced to abort a child, especially from an organization that claims to be a church. I will always carry the emotional scars of abortion, but I gladly display them to you and to others as a means to share the truth, to give hope to those still suffering, to honor my two precious angels in heaven, Matthew and Sarah, and to hopefully prevent others from destroying their lives and the lives of their unborn children. I thank you guys so much for being so on fire for life and for listening to me today. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless this walk. Thank you, Patty. Thank you for willing to be